What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the third episode of Football Loan Podcast. Today we have Guilherme, aka Guy. How are you, man? I'm good, man. Yeah, doing good. Thank you for the for the invite. Of course, man. And where are you from again? Uh Brazil. From Brazil. Yeah, São Paulo, Brazil. My high school, it was like 50% was Brazilian. Really? Yeah. Here in Orlando or? Uh, it was in Broward County. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, so many Brazilians there. So many Brazilians. So many Brazilians over there, man. So, yeah. When when did you move up to the U.S.? Yeah, so I was born and raised in Brazil. Um, my family's still there. Everyone's there. Um, came to the U.S. when I was 14. Came you know, to high school um, here in Florida. What high school? IMG. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah you know IMG? Yeah, I yeah IMG, yeah. 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 No, I mean, it's a boarding school, so. Yeah. Yeah, I went to IMG. Four years there, you know, to play soccer, studied there. And now I'm at Stetson. Um, I'm a senior now, almost done. So, born and raised in São Paulo, but moved to Florida like yeah. eight years ago. And how was it like playing in IMG? Like, because IMG is a big school in the U.S. and very expensive. Like, did you pay for it or? Uh, well, at IMG they have scholarships. Mm -hmm. um, it is a very expensive place, but they have scholarships, especially for international students. So, man, it was, it was crazy. IMG, you know, I don't know if you've been there. Yeah, I've been there. It's a crazy, crazy place, crazy facility. Um, and, man, it was amazing. Met so many people. Um, had great memories there. And best decision of my life, man, going there. <laughs> how's it playing for them? Like, how's the atmosphere and everything just playing for, um, for IMG Academy? Well, um, I mean, when I was there, it was like highly competitive. Um, I don't know how it is now, but it was highly competitive. Um, so many guys coming from different countries, wanting you know to go to college, get a pro career. Um, so it was always very competitive. Um, so it was definitely like a very demanding environment. But I just developed so much there. So I mean, it was a great experience on and off the field, but definitely. Demanding. <laughs> yeah. What made you choose Tedston? Like Tedston, was there other options? Uh, yeah, I was talking to a couple other schools. Um, most of them up north. Uh, some in South Carolina. Some in Georgia as well. But I had spent four years in Florida already. Yeah. I'm from Brazil, so I love the warm weather. I hate the cold. I could never go to like Massachusetts or yeah, you know these states. Nah, I hate it. So Stetson just seemed like a great place, man. You know, like a, it was a good, solid program. Um, coaching staff was new, so they were, you know, trying to get a, a big change in the program. Yeah. So that was exciting. Staying in Florida, you know, close to Orlando, close to Daytona, just seemed like a great fit for me, you know. How is it moving to Stetson from IMG? Like, did you like the change? Yeah, I mean, it, it's totally different. Um, Cause you know at IMG it was a boarding school, so many rules, man. Really, <laughs> like why? What what, what what kind of rules did they have? Man, t I mean to get out of the off campus, yeah. you had to you know sign out. You had oh. you know your parents yeah. had to authorize it, man. <sighs> so tough. Like you wanted to go to a restaurant, you had to you know sign the paper and everything. Um, the dorms, just so many rules there. So going from a boarding school like that, I mean, it was amazing. Like, I don't complain at all, yeah. but there were so many rules. And then you go to Stetson, like to a, a university and, you know, you're free. You have your own space. You can do whatever you want. So that was really different, um, but definitely different, like in a, in a good way for me. Okay. And let's go back to when you were in Brazil. Like, what made you fall in love with soccer? Because I know soccer is a big thing over there. Like, soccer, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're, when you're born in Brazil already, love soccer you know yeah. like the first presents that you get are like soccer balls or like soccer jerseys yeah. so since i mean my first memories in brazil were like playing soccer maybe when i was four i started playing already uh, with my dad with my cousins you know so like you said it's a big thing in brazil and i was just born with that soccer culture you know yeah. like since a young age just playing um, then I started training and, you know, starting progressing, but was always completely in love with soccer. Always had my little ball at home and just, you know, <laughs> dribbling my parents, trying to make them in the house. So that's a big part of my life, man. At what age did you really start playing? Uh, well, I mean, 
just playing for fun, like I said, since very young age, maybe four years old. Um, I just, I mean, I started training already when I was very, very young. Like, at, you know, those little clubs that they have, yeah. um, they don't really have like tournaments for yeah. five year olds, but you played some friendlies, you played, you know, amongst each other. Um, so since I was very, very little, and then when I was eight, that's when I started like training for a club uh, back in, in Sao Paulo. Started playing soccer, uh, started playing futsal as well for that same club. And that's where I stayed until I moved to the US. So like six years, seven years there. Um, but started at a very young age, yeah. four years old. How did IMG come across you? Man, it was actually through a friend from the same club um, that I was. He, I think he went to a camp at IMG because they host like some camps there. Yeah. Um, he came back and it was like, co he was completely in love with the place. He was like, man, like uh, that was the best two weeks of my life. Like it's crazy, the facilities. Cause I mean, in my club in Brazil, we had like one field, you know, like we didn't have a lot of like structure, you know? Um, and he was just telling me about IMG, they had like 10 fields, they had everything, a gym. Um, so he told me about it. And at the time, you know, I was going to high school. So it was that period when you kind of have to decide, especially in Brazil, if you want to play or if you want to study, because it's very demanding to do both there. Yeah. And I was in love with soccer, but I always, always understood that education, like it's very important. Yeah. So that's why, I, like I started to consider different options and my friend, he came back from IMG, he, you know, told great things about it. And I sit down with my parents, started looking at it and I was like, okay, that's what I want for my life. Like I can play, I can study, I can, you know, meet different people. And that's when IMG came across, ended up going to a camp, um, getting recruited and everything. So it all started with this friend, like I'm, I'm forever grateful, you know, for him. So started with that, like just looking for an option where I could, play and study as well, you know. What club did you play for back in Brazil? Um, I played for a small club in Sao Paulo. It's called Pineiras, Clube Pineiras. Um, very small club, but that's where I, I was raised. Um, played there for six years, like I said, soccer and futsal as well. Yeah. So all my early memories from soccer, you know, all my first tournaments, um, everything was for Pineiras. That's where I met my best friends as well. Um, so that's where I played, and then I came to IMG. What's the difference between playing between soccer in the U.S. and soccer in Brazil? Man, I, I would say it's a completely different sport. Like, I think it's just a cultural thing. Since in Brazil you're just born with that, and like it's ingrained in you, I think the culture is way stronger. But the U.S. is catching up course like the structure here like all the organization that you guys have um, is just amazing like things that I've never seen in Brazil and you know Brazil is like the country of soccer and yeah. there are things that you guys do in the US that in Brazil I've never seen so it's definitely different in that sense like the cultural thing like the the style of play as well um, I think Brazil is more like the flareness you know um, they're not as much as organization, while here is it's more like focused on tactics and all those things like like things like that preparation, all those details, things that maybe you don't focus a lot in Brazil. So I think that's the main difference. Um, but soccer is growing a lot here, and maybe you guys are gonna catch up with Brazil. I don't think so. I don't think we we are, but you would never know. <laughs> and um, so how's like the culture of soccer in in Brazil in specific? Because, like, um, were you in Brazil d during the time of the World Cup? Yeah, yeah. It was um, right before I came to the U.S. So I came in August, and the World Cup was, like, June, July. So I was there for the World Cup. How was that feeling? Man, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing because we're just so passionate about soccer. Yeah. You know, we live soccer. Um, every weekend, you just go to the stadium. Like, the, the city, you know, you just live soccer. Everything is about soccer. Um, and to have a World Cup there was amazing man and also the the olympics yeah. it was the olympics you guys won right you guys won the, yeah how was how was that i know that had to be great for you guys man man, man the olympics was also sick sick because i mean we had like a terrible memory from the world cup because we lost yeah. 7-1 yeah. um so that was sad 
And the Olympics, it was always like a big dream for the Brazilians because, you know, we won so many things, but we had never won the Olympics. It was always like, I mean, in 2008, we lost in the final to Argentina. 2012, we lost to Mexico. So we had this big hope. And to finally win it, you know, uh, stadium was crowded. Neymar was like flying. So it was amazing, man. It was amazing. So how was the transition from Brazil to the U.S.? At the beginning, it was definitely hard, you know, especially because I was very young. Um, I kind of left, like, my friends, my family. And, you know, like, when you're 14, you're kind of transitioning, you know, to, like, high school. You're changing a lot. And to come here was, like, definitely hard. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I was in a great place. I met great people there as well. Um, but it was definitely hard, the transition, especially, like, in the soccer, like, soccer-wise, because I was used to, like, one thing, and then here, you know, like I said, it's so different in terms of preparation on how they see the game as well. Um, so it was definitely, like, a big transition for me, but I just learned so much when, like, coming here. So it was hard at the beginning, but you just got used to it, you know. What was your parents', like, initial reaction when you were like, Mom and Dad, I want to... I want to change. I want to move up to the U.S. and try something else. And Definitely tough for, for them as well. Um, they always supported me. They always thought that was the best for me. But it's, it's I bet it's very hard, you know, for the parents to kind of let the kid go and be so far um, from their son. So definitely hard for them. But they always knew that that was the best for me. And, like, uh, my parents are just so supportive of everything that I do. So definitely hard for them. <laughs> But at the same time, it was, like, for the best. So. What do you like here compared to back in Brazil? Uh, I mean, it's just different. Like, it's a different culture. Um, I ended up falling in love with the American lifestyle as well. Like, I love Brazil. It's my <laughs> I think it's the best country in the world. But the U.S., the thing, like, the way how the Americans do things is just, it's impressive, man. Like, it's so organized, like, just to the point. And I really like it here, man. I really like it here. I want to stay here after college. So I, ca I can say I'm very lucky to like live here. And then I go to Brazil on vacation. So like I have like both, both like sides, you know, both cultures. Yeah, so that's amazing. And really like the US, man. Really like the US. What's like your goals after you leave Dev Team? Um, right now, I'm starting to look for jobs. You know, like, it's been great, like, great four years here. I mean, eight years in the U.S. Um, but now it's time to kind of get a job and, you know, get things going. Um, so the plan is really to, to get a job here. I want to work with finance. So What's your major at Step Tim? I'm a business major. Business. Yeah, and uh, minor in finance. How is it balancing soccer um, and school? I mean, it's something that you learn. Like, when you're a freshman, you think you come and it's just about soccer. You know, you're going to come, you're going to play, and, like, school is secondary. Yeah. But as you get older, you understand it's, you know, it's not. Like, you actually need to focus. Um, you know, the coaches always help us. They're very supportive of that. So they help, like, in that management as well, like, balancing both things. So definitely hard, but you get used to it. Like, you, you just get to a point where, like, you know that you have to focus on both things and you just organize yourself and you have people that help you as well. So, that's, it, it gets better every time. What are some challenges you faced up here in the U.S.? I think the f biggest one is definitely the cultural thing. Um, Brazilians and Americans are completely different. And just getting used to that. Like in Brazil, we have like some habits, you know, like I was telling before, I'm always late for everything. So <laughs> that's always been a big challenge for me, just getting in the habit of, you know, being on time and doing things like, like in a strict way, that's the biggest thing. Like the cultural aspect of, you know, your habits of, they how people see life and, you know, things like that. I think that's the biggest challenge to get used to that. Um, of course, another, challenge was to be away from my family um in brazil i always had like my mom doing things for me my dad you know they always always they were always helping me with stuff 
I'll get home from school and the food will be there, you know. And here I need to cook, I need to do everything. So that's a that was a big challenge, but I like I look back and I just learned so much. Like now I can like live on my own, you know. Yeah. But at the beginning it was a a hard challenge to get used to like that different life, you know, being by myself and things like that. Let's move back to Brazil. Like what are some challenges you faced in Brazil? Um I mean the first one especially like in terms of soccer uh it's so competitive and it's so demanding so difficult to manage soccer and school um at a young age not as much but especially at the time when i was come like thinking about coming here that's when it kind of starts to get you know like you're going to the u15 um you're training a lot you're playing you're traveling and then you need to study so that's a big challenge that I think everyone faces in Brazil, everyone who plays soccer fr faces in Brazil, you know, to manage those two things. And like I said, it's so competitive. You have everyone plays soccer, you know, the level is very high. So that's definitely hard, um, that competition. I think that's a, a big challenge, like for everyone there and like managing soccer, school. I think those are the biggest things. That's what drive a lot of people, you know, to come to the U.S. as well, you know, this balance, you know, and um, just getting away from, you know, that extreme competitiveness and the soccer environment in Brazil can be like very toxic, I would say. Yeah. So um, that's probably the biggest challenge, you know, that's the one thing that's kind of hard in Brazil. Yeah. What's the structure of soccer in Brazil? Like, how does it work? Like, how is playing for your team? Like, how does that work? So there's so many clubs in Brazil. Um, like in my city, I can't even count the amount of teams, um, there, like just in the state of Brazil, like in the state of Sao Paulo, um, we have like four divisions with like 20 clubs, like pro clubs, you know, so, so many teams. Um, so I think that's a, that's a big thing. There's so many clubs in the high level, um, in terms of like the structure there. And since a young age, you just start like playing for a club and you start like growing up in that club. And then like when you go to like a U17, um, U20, like latest, that's when you kind of like get the chance of like signing a pro contract, you know? Um, so that's the, basically the structure. Um, a lot of clubs, you know, you have the big clubs of course, and then you have the smaller clubs with like small investment. Um, and you just keep growing. Like you have um, U7, U9, U11, 13, 15, 17, and 20. Um, and you just grow within the club, try to sign a pro contract. And that's basically the structure there. You would play against teams in your like area? Yeah, so at the academy level, um, especially until the U17, it's mainly within your state. Um, there are some tournaments like the like a national cup, or you know some like s different tournaments that they have like in the U.S. They have like I don't know like Dallas Cup, like just tournaments like that. You know that are short, um, but the main ones are really the s like state cups, um, like in the academy, like w at your a like the young ages when you're in the academy. So you play clubs from the like the whole state. You have like two, three divisions um, like at, at the state level. And then you play those leagues, you play those tournaments. And then at the U17 age, that's when you have like the Brazilian Cup. Um, you have a Brazilian U17 league as well. And same for U20s. Yeah, um, so, I mean, uh, when I was at Pinedas, you, we used to play many clubs from um, like the metro area of Sao Paulo and some clubs like from like a little farther than that. Um, those were mainly the teams that we played against. And then as you get older, you know, it just get wider and you just play more clubs. Have you had any like friends who've made it to sign that pro contract? Yeah, I've, I've had a couple of them, um, in different countries, you know, uh, from Brazil, like here in the U S as well, people from IMG, um, I have guys becoming pro, um, in the U S after college, I had friends becoming pro in Brazil, in Panama, in Europe. 
so I just met a lot of people who, who made it and it's just great to see them um, especially people that you see growing up see you see them working hard every day and then see them becoming pro it's it's great you know and different paths as well you know yeah. um, so a couple of friends um, and they're doing very well thankfully so. moving up to IMG like which teams would you guys play and which schools would you guys play um we would play mainly you know the teams from Florida um so like Orlando City um some other t teams that don't have like a a pro team like yeah. I don't know like Weston okay. um Kendall these teams and then teams from outside of Florida as well like teams from North Carolina Georgia you know in these different tournaments um but it was mainly like within Florida you know all those tournaments within Florida what are some things that, that you guys won? Uh, I got a chance to win a, like some tournaments there. Um, of course, we have the IMG Cup, which is just a tournament that we host. Disney Cup, we won Adidas Cup. Um, just a couple of tournaments, like smaller tournaments, like Sarasota Cup, things like that. Um, just some tournaments that we, we ended up playing. Um, so those are some things that we won over the last, well, I mean, in my four years there. You said you've met some play some players from St. Lucia. Yes. Where? At IMG, actually, who was uh, a center back in my team, um, Sebastian. I think he actually like ended up playing a couple of games for the national team in like the the younger levels. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was he was a very cool guy. Haven't talked to him in a while. I actually need to reach out to him see how he's doing. But yeah, man, from from St. Lucia. Yeah, we had a lot of players from like the islands, you know, I had some friends from Bahamas, from Bermuda. Um, and I had the chance to meet, you know, uh, this guy center back from St. Lucia. Have you met some other players from like Europe in that side at um, IMG? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at IMG, we had mainly players from like, you know, Mexico, the islands, from South America. But definitely met some European guys as well, guys from Italy, from Spain. Um, IMG is like a very, very diverse place, you know, guys from everywhere. Um, but in my team, for example, just from on top of my head, like we had a center back from Panama, center back from Italy, uh, right back from Germany, left back from Mexico. Yeah. Then it was like me, a guy from South Africa, another Brazilian, an Italian striker, a Japanese winger. So guys from all over the, the world and it was definitely great, you know, to play with this, with different styles of play as well, you know. So how is it adapting to those styles? It's it's hard, like it's it's a challenge. Yeah. Um, I remember at IMG, in all, all my four years there, the beginning of the season was very hard all the time, because you always had like a an incoming like class, like different players coming every year. It changes a lot within IMG, and like you said, the cultural aspect is massive as well so you would have like a a center back who is from italy and loves the long balls and then like you're brazilian and you want the ball on your feet yeah. and then you have a japanese winger who is like big in the 1v1 so just getting the chemistry is definitely a challenge at the beginning and i remember that IMG we struggled a lot at the beginning of the season like the first month yeah. and that's because of you know the cultural yeah. changes yeah, yeah adapting to that was like communicating one of, one of the biggest factors or did everyone speak English at the point? That's also a big factor. Um, most of the guys had a very good level of English, but you always, you know, had some language barriers. Yeah. You know, even like me, eight years, I mean, in the US for eight years and I still struggle at times. Yeah. So imagine someone that just came from a different country. So that's definitely a challenge at IMG, something that, we end up facing it set at times as well. Yeah. But you just get used to it, you know. End of the day, you're playing soccer. Like, it can't be that hard, you know. Yeah. So it's a language of soccer, like you could say. So. What was the structure at IMG? Like, when did you guys would get up and how many times would you guys train, you know, and hit the weight room? Like, how did, that, how did all that work? It was actually very similar to what we do in the college level. We would train every day from Monday to Friday, and then we would have games in the weekends. Um, you know, you would have the regular practice, you would have physical conditioning like three, four times a week. Um, you, we would 
would hit the gym like twice a week. Um, then IMG offers like some extra things like uh, nutrition, mental training, vision training, speed training. Um, those are some perks of IMG. And so that was basically the structure, like very similar to what we do at Stetson, for example, just training ev every day, having some off the, off the field um, activities as well, and then playing in the weekend, traveling, you know. Um, so that's actually something that helped me a lot in my transition. Um, just, you know, being able to develop this routine, those habits, at IMG and then coming to Stetson, it was like very similar. So were you able to like travel um and tour? We got to travel abroad twice. Yeah, yeah. I think my sophomore year we went to England. We wow. played some clubs in England and then my junior year we went to Spain. So it was amazing, man. <laughs> How was it in England? Like which teams did you play against in England? We ended up playing the Tottenham Academy. I think that's the biggest one that we played. Um, we played a younger team from the Liverpool Academy, but it was like younger than us, you know, the, that's a big difference. So yeah. they, they played us with the younger team. Um, those were pretty much the biggest academies that we played. And then we had games against smaller clubs. I think we, we went to Wales, um, just some smaller clubs from like London, you know, so amazing experience, man. It was my first time there. How was it playing against those those big academy clubs? It was definitely hard, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we got smashed by Liverpool, as you can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got smashed by Liverpool. We thought him we did pretty well. We lost like 2-1, I think. Um, but it was just like mind-blowing, you know? Yeah. Seeing how the level is, the level of perfection, you know, in everything that they did. Like you were here and you think you're like, oh, I'm like I'm big time. We're winning tournaments here. We're doing well in Florida. Then you go play a team like Liverpool or like Tottenham and it's completely, completely different. different. Man, everything, the rhythm, the technique, everything. And how was it in Spain? Which teams did you guys, did you guys play with? In Spain, we played, we played like third division clubs, mainly um, teams from like Madrid, from like around the metro area of Madrid. I don't, from what I recall, we didn't really play any big clubs. Um, so we had a better record there than we had in England. Yeah. Um, but Spain is just crazy, man. Spain is, I fell in love with Spain, man. I had the chance to, um, when I was 18, to like spend some time in a, with some clubs there in Spain. Really? And man, I just, I just love how they play foot, like soccer in Spain. And going there, playing against teams from Spain, even though it was challenging, it was just amazing to see them play and how they think about the game, you know. So when you were in England, was it cold there? So cold, man. How was it like playing in the cold, man? Because I know it is yeah, hard. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough. I, I like I told you, I hate the cold. Yeah. Always hated the cold. That was my biggest challenge ever. And England, I think it's just it's not even just the cold because I've been to cold places. When I um, went to play in Germany, like it was snowing, but it's not as bad as England, man. Cause yeah. England, it's the wind, the rain. You just feel like you're gonna freeze. Like you can't even focus on the game. So it's it's challenging, man. Wow. Thank God I lived in Florida for eight years in Brazil. So yeah. like it was pretty chill. So. And you said you played in Germany. It was amazing too. Yeah, I was 15 at the time, and I went to to play with like. Uh, some other players from Florida. We went to play some um, friendlies there. So that was great. Ended up um, getting the chance to try with a German club like after, you know, after uh, playing those friendlies. So it was, it was great. It was my first time playing like in Europe. Yeah. Um, so definitely great experience as well. Learned a lot too. So even though it was cold and it was snowing and everything, um, it was great. Which club was it you tried out for? 1860 Munich. Ah, yeah. yeah. That, they're not doing as well right now. They had some problems. I think they relegated. Pretty sure they're like in third division now. Yeah. But at the time, they're in the second division. They're like the small team from Munich. Um, but yeah, it was it was great. We had a great time there. 1860 Munich, uh, their academy is unbelievable. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. they're really good. 
because I remember when I went down to play um, for like because we would try out mm -hmm. for um, a team and then we, we would like travel to Germany mm -hmm. and play against like different academies in Germany and yeah. we, we played against 1860 Munich but our team we were like a U17 and we played against the U15 team and we got demolished bro like really? they're really good yeah. it's a very high level there yeah. um, sadly I couldn't stay because there's some like legal issues you know until you turn 18 oh. it's hard if you don't have like an european passport yeah. but it was it was always my dream man always my dream to go there the level is just so high like you said um mm -hmm. sadly they're not doing as well right now yeah. but their academy was always very good that's great that you had the chance to go there man yeah. and play them yeah it's so good so different because i remember there's just one player um i was talking to him because we would have like different meetings and stuff and we would like meet different players um, cause there's like a, a DSB school or something like that, where they, where all the players that plays different sports would go to that school and that's do like seven hours of, of learning. And then they would go and train for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. And he, I talked to him and he told me, um, first he got, he got recruited mm -hmm. from, um, his, a small club in his hometown to 1860. And then when he tried with the team, they didn't take him cause they, they told him he wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. And then later on he got another tryout with Bayern Munich. And th and then and then he made it with Bayern Munich. No way! Yeah, he yeah. went to Bayern. Yeah, he played playing for Bayern. Bayern is just top top level, yeah, man. Amazing. Well, I bet they regret it in 1860. You know, yeah. the guys playing at Bayern now, oh, man. That's crazy. Yeah. I can't even imagine how the level is there, man. It's it's so good, man. Did you get to play against Bayern? We didn't get to play against. We got we got to watch a U23 game, mm -hmm. but we didn't get to play against them because I think it was during that time it was off season. Yeah, but they were playing a friendly. The U twenty three were playing. They were playing a friendly, so mm -hmm. we got to watch. But I playing against Bayern Munich, man, it would have been crazy. Bayern is, it's probably one of the top three clubs in the world. Yeah, so that's yeah. crazy. How was it playing at Stetson? Like, how was it coming to Stetson and fighting for a spot? It was definitely like a challenging at times, uh, but overall a great experience. Um, at IMG, like I. I had a like a great time there. Like uh, I was the captain for three seasons. Like uh, I was doing very well. Then you come to stats and you, and it's like a different level, you know. And um, college soccer is just so different, man. Just so different. I think that's the biggest thing. And just coming from you know a club where you play every minute, and then coming to stats and like finding better players than you, that was definitely char challenging. You know, to fight for the spot, you know, you, you had to do well every single day and, and fight for that. So that was definitely challenging. But I just learned a lot. I developed a lot. Um, I always understood that a lot of times you, you're you not going to have the most minutes, but you need to find a way of contributing, you know. And I was always aware that there were guys that were better than me in my position. So I, had really I didn't really have an issue with that. So I think that's something that helped me, you know, to build up and start getting more minutes and keep working hard, you know. But it was definitely ch challenging at the beginning, but it was a great experience. Like playing college soccer is, it's amazing. Like the relationship you build with your teammates, like it's, it's something unique. It's something you don't find in like a, like in a pro environment or an academy yeah. environment, you know. So yeah. it was, it was amazing, man. It was fun. From your perspective, how was the whole transition from being a freshman and how you guys performed? during the freshman year and then being a senior and how you guys performed in senior year, like how was that? Well, I mean, Setson, I mean, the pro soccer program went through a lot of changes over the last years. Um, and the same happened during my time. Freshman year, we we had a very solid season. We ended up losing, uh, losing in the conference finals. Oh. Yeah, it was, it was tough, uh, tough game. We ended up losing. Against who? Uh, Lipscomb. Again. Yeah, again, man. Okay, yeah. yeah, I have nightmares with leaves coming. <laughs> it's been tough. Yeah. They they've been kicking us out man, in all the tournament all the time. But um, yeah, we lost in the final. We had a very different team from now. Uh, we'll, I think now we have a very technical team. Before it was like a very solid team, like tactically, tactically, mm -hmm. and it was definitely like a, a transition from now and then. We underwent like a a change in the coaching staff. Um, we struggled a lot last season. So we kind of had like everything. We had a 
season in which we went to the final with like a like a solid team, but not as technical. Uh, we had a season in which we were just average. We had a season in which we struggled a lot. And then we had a season in which we had a very good and technical team, um, but we ended up losing in the semifinals, you know? Um, so it was a, it was a, I think the program is still going through a transition and it was nice to be part of that, you know, and see how the program is changing. I think there's some great things ahead in the future. And it was it was good and interesting to see how it changed like from my freshman year to sophomore. I mean, to my senior year. And I don't care how many times I ask this question. From your perspective, how was the playoffs? Because man, it hurts. It hurts so bad. Like, tell me, tell me from your eyes how everything played out, man. Well, we de definitely didn't expect to get crushed in the semifinal. Yeah. I think it was a very unusual game for many reasons. Um, we had a very solid regular season. We start off like on the low end. We didn't do very well in the first games, yeah. but we improved a lot. I think things start clicking, and we had a very good like sequence. Mm -hmm. And we went to to the playoffs with a very good, you know, like attitude with a very good mindset. We were very confident. Uh, we had a great game against uh, Liberty in the quarterfinals. Um, so we were confident, like going to the Lipscomb game, we were confident, we know we knew it would be hard because Lipscomb have a very good team. Yeah. Um, they were in a very good sequence as well, but we beat them in regular season. Yeah. We came from a very great, good game against Liberty. Um, but then, you know, we had a, a good first half, could have scored a couple of times. So it was a very like 50-50 game in the first half and then in the second half, it was just very unfortunate, man. You know, those things that it can happen in soccer and you just don't expect. One little thing went off and then it just built up from there. They ended up crushing us. And it was hard, man. Like, I, I wasn't even playing because I've been injured the whole season. Oh, really? What did you, what did you hurt? Um, I, I had a fracture in my ankle. Yeah, my f like the first friendly, first preseason game. 30 seconds into the game, <laughs> I... Like the first player didn't even touch the ball and I ended up like rolling, oh. uh, spraining my ankle and yeah. breaking one of the bones on the side. Yeah. So I didn't get to play the whole season. So it was even more painful like to be- And your senior year too? Yeah. Senior year, I was watching. I knew it could be the last game. Yeah. I knew my career, my soccer career could be done there. So it was very hard to, to watch that, especially the way it played out, you know? Yeah. It wasn't expected, and it happens in soccer. So. How was that whole process, like just being injured and just having to be on the sidelines just watching, and how was that? It's tough. It's something that I had never experienced. Um, in like 10, 15 years, 10, 15 years of soccer, I had never been injured. Um, I had like some minor things, but I had never like actually had an injury, like a fracture, yeah. um, something like that. And, you know, you come to your senior year, you're excited. You think you're gonna play, and then you're gonna have your last moments, and then first minute in the season after like one week of training, and you just get injured by your side. <laughs> it's tough, man. Yeah. It's definitely tough. Something that, like I said, I wasn't used to it. So just the whole recovery process, understanding that okay, this happened. I'm injured now, and now it's about trying to recover as fast as you can, like working, even though you might not even get to play again, yeah. you just have that hope and yeah. um, you need to get on that mindset. If not, it's gonna crush it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just kept that mindset throughout the whole semester, just working. Um, thankfully, the trainer, Ali, she was always great with me. She always helped me a lot. Um, the guys were very supportive as well. Um, I ended up getting cleared two days before the semifinal so I didn't even get to train. Yeah. Um, but even though it was challenging, like I kept a good mindset and was trying to get back as soon as I could. Yeah. You know, at least now I, I'm cleared. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not gonna get to play college soccer again, but I can play pickups in the league. Intramural, yeah. you guys beat us by the way, but. Oh yeah, how was that intramural yeah. from, your, from your perspective? So I love playing soccer in all ways. I love the fun aspect of soccer, you know, Sunday league pickup, 
like in Brazil, you grow up playing pickup. Like, so I love that environment, and I always wanted to play intramural. I think it's, it's fun, man. It's fun. It gets, you know, like kind of tense at times, yeah. but it, at the same time, like you don't have that pressure. Like you're playing for fun with your friends. So I always wanted to play, and after four years, I finally got a chance to play intramural because you know they have those rules. Yeah. Um, so that was fun, man. I only got to play one game, which was against you guys. Just one? Yeah. It was one game because um, I think, I mean, first I didn't know about it. And then Abdul, like a uh, guy that I, I met in playing pickup, he told me about it. Um, but also I thought I couldn't even play. So I got to play only the semifinals, and that's the game yeah, where we ended up losing. Yeah. Tough game. You guys, did you guys win yeah, the whole thing? Yeah, we won the whole thing. It was I loved it. But when I when I saw you out there, I was like, okay, this guy has to this guy had to play futsal in Brazil. Yeah. Cause you you lo you were looking like a real futsal player back then. Yeah, man, futsal is a big part of like how I play. You know, um, grew up playing futsal, and futsal in Brazil is massive, man. Yeah. All those big players, Neymar, everyone that you can think of, Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, those technical players, they play futsal. So I think it played a major role, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's something that I still carry. <laughs> Back in my high school, some of the people I know that from Brazil, futsal was, is everything, yeah. man. Futsal and futvolley. Futsal and futvolley, man. Those are my favorite things. I, yeah. I not gonna lie, I think I like it more than soccer, to be honest, man. I always, always liked futsal more. I, I, I think I was always better at futsal, but in terms of career, it's like it's not as big. But futsal and football, it's so big in Brazil, man. Right now, I think I have like two or three friends or two people I know that play that stop playing soccer and it's just playing football now. That's usually what happens. Usually, what happens, you just go to a, like go play football. You go to a football court and just like get like former players. The guy is yeah. so good and I don't understand how good you guys are at that sport, man. It's just it's just so amazing to just watch you guys play. Yeah, it's just it's like so wow. Fun. It's so fun, wow. man. It's so fun, and it's impressive. It's something that I want to work on, because it's so different. Like, okay, you use your feet. It's almost like soccer, but at the same time, it's so different, you know, because at soccer, the ball comes, you want to bring the ball down. Yeah. In football, you, the ball comes, you need to get it up, you know? So it's different, and it's hard to get used to it. So um, it's something that now that I'm done with soccer, I want to, like, start, like, yeah. working on, and all my friends play back in Brazil, and... Yeah. I look forward to it, man. I'll, I'm going to Brazil next week, and it's yeah. going to be summer. Yeah. So hopefully I'll play a lot of football, man. I'm, I'm very excited. When you play football and futsal, it's like your touch, is just, your touch gets so good. Like yeah. It just becomes so natural and so perfect. It just it requires a lot of technique. You know, futsal, small spaces, you need to think quick. Um, it's a very like intense game. Yeah. As, uh, I mean, most of the times you don't have as much time as like you have in the, like a soccer field in the 11 v 11. Yeah. So you just learn, you know, and if you play since a young age, you start developing that. And I think that's such a big, like, part of why Brazil is so successful, because guys play futsal since they're young. They play pickup, you know, in small spaces, and you just develop the technique, you know. So um, it's fun, and I think it helps a lot. So are you going to be here um, at Stetson until next semester, or are you leaving this semester? Uh, I graduate in the spring, so... I have another semester here. So next semester, there's going to be indoor soccer intramural. I heard about it. I heard about it. You want to be on my team next year? Sure, man. Just let me know. Right. Hit me up. I'll definitely play. Right, I mean, it's, I'm looking forward to it. I actually got to play um, indoor intramural, I think my sophomore year, because he was like in the off season, so I got to play, and man, it was so fun. Yeah, we had like a, a team like with another Brazilian, some other guys, like a guy from the soccer team. And it was so fun, man. So, I mean, if, you, if you're willing to take me, man, just hit me up. Let me know. I'll definitely play, man. Yeah, man. Definitely play. What is an advice you would give to, like, some other Brazilians or just some other players from Brazil? Um, like, if, they want, if they're just struggling, like, what are some advice, like, you would give them to just help them? Well, one thing that I always have, you know, as a, like a philosophy, th something that I always think is, be grateful for the opportunities that you have. Take advantage that of them and understand that everything happens for a reason, you know? Um, 
So if, if you're in Brazil and you're struggling, you know, the system can be, be very harsh. Um, understand that there's a reason for that. Maybe that's a chance for you to make a change, you know, like I did to come to the US. Um, so always keep that in mind. Everything happens for a reason and always keep your your mind open to, you know, different opportunities, different way, like different paths. Um, and one thing that I always tell, soccer is a very hard thing. It's a, it can be very toxic, you know, very challenging. So always keep that in mind. Understand that there are other things that you can do. Never, you know, put your education aside. Um, that's something that I learned that it's very valuable and keep working hard, you know, always have that as a priority, but at the same time, always keep that in mind as well, you know, maybe if it's not working out, looking for different things and um, keep your mind open, understand that everything happens for the, a reason and you can always succeed in other ways as well, you know. All right, man. I appreciate you coming out. Yeah. You know, hopefully I'll see you soon for that indoors. And man, yeah. safe safe travels, man. Appreciate it, man. And like I told you, I do have a certain soccer shirt for you, man. Oh wow. Yeah. Really? Man, you can wear it whenever you want, like for indoor. Wow. You got Look at it? That. Perfect. Yeah, it has a little number eight there, you know. A number eight at the, the back. back. Perfect, man. Oh, I appreciate this. I know you, you had some soccer guys here. I can't believe they didn't bring you anything, yeah, but man. there you go, man. Appreciate that so much, man. Yeah, All right, man. All right, have have a good day, man. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, man. Good luck and good stuff. Congrats on the podcast, man. It's amazing. I love it.